it's a very common fact that the best music by young artists comes from Exeter College in the Exeter and Devon area. So I've rounded up lots of bands from that area, the southwest of England, and I've just basically asked them to perform for me. And this is the result. So we have obvious reasons. Lois and Eva. Iguanas. And last but not least, Silver Tree. So now that you've heard all of these bands' names, it's time to get into it. And there's only one thing left for me to say. Welcome to the Clatters TV Show.
and this first song is our first ever single called Forefathers. Yeah. 
I'm here with Iguanas, who just performed their debut single, Forefathers, which came out on the 12th of January 2023. I'm here with them now to just speak more about their musical career. So, Iguanas, they've done gigs up and down the country, Bath, Bristol, Exeter, but they actually formed in Kingsbridge. Could you tell me how that came about and why you formed? Yeah, sure, of course I can, mate. So, Iguanas originally started with me and Shaggy here. Yeah. Uh, there was this uh, charity workshop band that was set up. in. Um, there was a guy called Dave Sharp who sadly passed away. And so a charity was set up in his honour. And there were music workshops, which um, they did like performances and stuff to raise money for charity against cancer and stuff. So that's how we initially met. And then we just kind of started jamming together and stuff. Uh, and then we decided... Uh, Oh, there was another guitarist, and then we got um, a bassist who um, wasn't Zach. Well, it's originally me, me and you used to play together, and then me and Ollie used to play together. Yeah. And I thought one would bring it all together, and, when, and then our bassist cancelled on the first practice, so he was like, "Oh, I'll just bring my brother along," and then we just never changed the lineup since, really. Yeah, it's been a breeze since then, mate. It's just fit like a glove. A breeze. So when did you form? Like, when was that? Ooh. It was just before COVID really it was, it happened. Was, yeah. It was during, it was just after the Christmas where COVID was coming up again. So we were kind of just allowed to start being in like groups inside, inside doors again, so in, indoors again. So it was, it was actually, it was, it was very exciting because not only were we a new band, we were actually in groups together for the first time in years. So it was all very new and exciting. So yeah, yeah it was kind of nice just to have that isolation a little bit because we could just kind of unlock ourselves behind we could doors. Just focus. Yeah. No pressure to do gigs, just to write a really solid mm. set, which is really useful. So after that, um, the country opened up again and and that re marked the return of live music, really. Yeah. So you were performing, the first gig I saw you guys at was The Cavern with yeah. Die Twice and West Chamberlain. Yeah. That was really so a yeah, that was a staple gig for us, I think. Yeah. That yeah. was, I think, uh, I'd, I'll speak for myself, I, I think I can also speak for these boys, that was one of our favourite gigs that we've ever done. Yeah. The intimacy and the energy of the of the night was just insane, and that was the second gig that we ever did, and we were just blown away, and we thought, it's, if this is what gigging is like, we just don't want this to stop, we just want to continue as a band and continue doing stuff like this, and it's just been amazing, yeah. Yeah, for the second gig you ever played to just sell out completely with, I think, 250, 300 yeah. tickets? Yeah, something like that. Just for no, for people who, no, no, no one really knew it. It's not what they do now, but that was just mental, I think. Yeah. yeah, I only knew Archer at that point because he was in my class at college, so I just went along to the gig the first time. 
I went to a gig on my own and it like was really special for me cuz like to get to know everyone there to like network with people. Yeah. I got to know Zach and yeah. ask him to be in my function band a couple months down the line. Yeah. And it w- was like a turning point for me going to gigs. That's good to hear, man. Yeah. And then I went to the Phoenix a month later. So how did the could you speak about the first and second time at the Phoenix? Um, yeah, sure. So with the with the first Phoenix, it was it was basically the cavern, but like times two. It was just like it was unreal, man. Like we were so excited to play like such a big venue, like literally only within a couple months of us forming, like or like gigging, sorry. Um, and it was just it was utterly bonkers. And I know that we kind of at the time we gave it everything we had. I will say from personal. I don't think it was our best set we've ever done, right. but just the amount of energy in that yeah. room That's and cool. like support, yeah, 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 from all the other bands. It's like it's how it's how I got to actually probably meet the Die Twice guys, you know, and like there were other people from college playing, and it was just honestly that that first Phoenix has such a special place yeah. in my heart because it was like you know, and I <laughs> I did that drum solo which like I've never done before. <laughs> like that was that was pretty much on the day in the green room. I was pl- practicing on the sofa trying to figure out what I was going to do because yeah. these guys for like a couple of weeks were like, oh, you need to do a drum solo to open yeah, it. Yeah. And I was just like, I don't want to do a drum solo. <laughs> but um, yeah, that went down a storm, I guess. So. Yeah, I think it was an amazing experience just to play on such a professional level as well. And have such like stuff like strobe lights are disposable and mist machines and fog machines and such. It was just amazing to have like that level of professionalism, professional sound guys and such. It was just such a turning point for the Warmers, I think. Yeah. I only I never remember much from a gig like it's all like a blur like do you ever feel that way like yeah yeah it's, it's, it's really weird because when you're playing your set it goes so fast yeah. Yeah. like it like I think the first Phoenix we had like a 45 minute set or something yeah. and honestly I remember it going past so quickly and I was like wait that was it yeah that was it and like being so buzzed afterwards but being like I'm going to need to try and remember this so yeah. hard because that went so fast. I think definitely something that sticks in my mind from that gig is, I think it was the first time we ever played our single Forefathers. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's the first time we did a little call and response thing as, as part of our set. And it was just amazing to hear such an amazing response from the crowd. Yeah. We duked out the crowd as well with the fake, the fake ending. The fake ending. The fake ending, ending twice. Yeah. And, I, and I face planted. I tried, <laughs> I tried to I go out into the crowd and I moshed for the beginning of the song and I tried to get back to the stage, tried to jump over the fence, went flying mm. under the stage. Like the whole crowd surged forwards because they thought I was dead. I think it was a little <laughs> moment. We were all like, is he okay? Yeah. Is he alive? Uh, is he like, dead? All right! And then people were like, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but the only thing I really remember from that gig was the crowd chanting. Take it off. Oh, oh, yes. Ollie. Right, yeah, so happened at, it happened first happened at the cavern where the whole crowd basically peer pressured me into getting naked on stage. Not naked, but <laughs> <laughs> taking my shirt off. He's, he's lying. Yeah, taking my shirt off. I now charge for that kind of thing. No, no. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it happened at the cavern and then it happened again at the Phoenix, except instead of 200 people, it was like 400 people yelling at me to take my shirt off. And every gig I go to now, someone goes, take your shirt off. I'm like, please leave me alone. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's just, it happens. Now. I mean, I've got a picture of, on my phone of all, three, of all three of you with your shirt off playing One Step Closer by Linkin Park. <laughs> you cheeky <laughs> bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> I mean, Archie did try to. You can't deny that. <laughs> uh, no, so actually, I, I, I was a little bit cheeky. I did a bit of a striptease. I, uh. I did get up. I got off on my stool. And I undid my belt. <laughs> and then Naughty. I just got back down again. Naughty. So, so Iguanas have been performing lots of songs ranging from covers by Rage Against Machine and Linkin Park to like originals like Forefathers, like you just heard. And I um, want to know, what's your favourite song? That's a, that's a tough one. That's a good question. If, you, if all four of you, in a row, just say your favourite song and your least favourite so I like probably one of the newer songs we wrote. It doesn't have a name yet, but we call it we call it Deftone Song because it sounds a lot like Deftones. But that yeah, that has a special place in my heart. It's one of my favourite songs that I've ever written and favourite songs to perform. So yeah, it means a lot to me. Um, yeah. Oh, least favourite. Um, <sighs> he's gonna hate me for this, but 
one step closer. Ooh. Yeah, I know it's controversial. I just think it's all right, but I, it's just all right. I'd enjoy playing it. Just a I enjoy every song we play, but if I had to choose a least favorite, it would probably be that one. Um, I think, I think at the moment my favorite song has been uh, to play at least has been um, uh, "See Your Face." That's a kind of more like chilled down one with like a kind of big chorus. Um, I don't know what it is. I just really, I really like the kind of the uh, the riff and just the, the kind of the vibe that it sets. It's like it's not super high energy, but it's just like it's it's good. I really like it. Um, and I think my least favorite song in terms of we've written at the moment is probably Hard Times. I don't know why. I, j- I feel like we've just played it so much. It's just like it's oversaturated a bit. You said before it's too indie. Yeah, yeah it is a bit too indie for my taste. Um, and I'm I'm also going to agree with you. I'm I don't know. I'm not really feeling the Linkin Park one too much anymore. Uh, it was it was a good idea, but I think. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Anyways, okay. My favorite one's definitely the Deftones one, which has no name. We just call it the Deftones song because roughly Deftonesy. Uh, I, d- I just like the open chords. To be honest, it sounds good. Least favorite. Oh. See your face. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. It, it oh. just. Oh, I just. Ooh. I just Ooh. don't like it. I don't know why. It's why not? I don't like it. It's like, I think it's mid. It's mid. I think my favourite song's probably got to be Forefathers. I just think the energy of it just really hypes up a crowd. It's just amazing seeing people sing back your song as well. When they know it, it's just brilliant. I just love the crowd response we get from it. Yeah. Um, least favourite song, it's got to be Hard Times, I think. It just sounds mm. like if the Chili Peppers had an aneurysm or something. I don't know. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, uh, I'm not a big fan of that one, but I, I, s- I still enjoy playing. I just played it for a quite a few years now. I think it's getting a bit old, but yeah. So obviously you've released Forefathers before. Do you have any more upcoming releases that you could tell me about? Well, we did a bit of recording a little while back. Won't yeah. give any specifics about it. Yeah. Um, nothing's finalised yet, but um, we've got a few things in the works. I think a lot of potential for a couple tunes. I think we've got we've laid down some drum tracks, which we're pretty pretty happy with, as a basis and foundation. A couple demo guitar parts, which we're happy with. Um, we'll, ju- we'll just see what happens, I think. But yeah, definitely some stuff on the horizon. So um, finally, if you follow in- fu- iguanas on Instagram, you should know that they have a hatred for drumsticks. Arch, <laughs> care to tell me about that? Um, I basically, I just whenever I see anything that's like cylindrical and made of wood, I just start seething. <laughs> and like I, I get I get an overwhelming urge to just destroy it. And that's pretty much where that comes from. It has nothing to do with the fact that I play really hard. It has nothing to do with the fact that I used to use sticks that are too thin. I just absolutely loathe <laughs> cylindrical wooden <laughs> objects. And finally, I don't think you've introduced yourselves. Go from left to right. Who are you and what do you play? Um, I'm Zach Sphira. I play bass in the corners. I am Arch Hooper, a.k.a. Shaggy, because we used to look similar, so we had to have a differentiating name. So we had, you were, you were the original Archie, I think, even though I'm older <laughs> by like a month. But anyway. Um, I'm Arch. I'm the drummer. Um, I hit things. <laughs> um, I'm Ollie, and I'm the vocalist. So that was on the Clatters TV show, myself in interviewing iguanas now they're going to get back up on stage again and perform what you're going to perform next um we're going to perform um hold me down one of our one of our originals so here is iguanas performing hold me down yeah. right hello again this is um this is a song called hold me down it's one of the first we ever wrote <laughs> No need to see that. That boy is stuck. Tries to the bleeding. Walk around.
through its dust Toss the bleeding over a mouthful Lord in the ceiling Come through its dust Toss the bleeding over a mouthful Silver Tree and this Smet Master J. Round. 
Go check us out. We'll check out all our socials, TikTok, Instagram. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much for having us on. And, yeah, we look forward to performing this. Yep, thank you for being here. Any last words? <laughs> you didn't give it. I know. All right, that's it from us. <laughs>